Welcome, Dr. Sai. Let me take a few minutes to introduce you before, um, before your speech. Um, Dr. Tsai Ing-wan, I think as everyone knows, is the chairperson of the DPP. Um, before entering public service, uh, she was a lawyer and a university professor. Uh, during the 90s, she was one of the key negotiators uh, when Taiwan was uh, trying to gain a session into the World Trade Organization. Her outstanding performance there uh, led to her recruitment to be the national security advisor uh, for President Lee Dung Hui. She also, and this is on the personal front, I, she is also the first presidential candidate in the Republic of China who has been a member of AmCham. So I think we should all give her a round of applause. So uh, today she's going to talk to us about Taiwan uh, next year, ten next ten year policy platform. Uh, so please join me in welcoming Dr. Tsai Ing-wen. Well, thank you very much for that welcome, despite the fact that I'm not the president yet. <laughs> well, uh, it's good to be here today and, and get invited. And uh, as I said before I came into the room, that I really cannot afford not coming here because it's so important uh, to face uh, members of the MCHAN here in Taipei. So, good afternoon. You have to be louder. I mean. For DPP, we, we, we expect a loud response from our audience, you know. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, good. I wouldn't say things like, um, <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, um, and especially President uh, Andrew Wu, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is my great pleasure to be here today, um, uh, invited by um, the American Chamber of Commerce to share my thoughts with you on the future challenges and opportunities facing Taiwan and Taiwan's bilateral relations with the U.S. I see many friends and familiar faces, uh, friends and people I have met over the last two decades, either as a trade negotiator or in my capacity as a minister, vice premier, or as a politician. Uh, well, it is my honor to be speaking to you today as the presidential candidate uh, representing um, the Democratic Progressive Party, that is DPP. Now, the friendship between Taiwan and the U.S. dates back six decades. Over the 60 years, Taiwan and the U.S. have not only been national security partners, but the U.S. is also one of Taiwan's key partners in economic and trade terms. The U.S. government, as well as U.S. businesses, have become our partners and our strongest support in managing globalization strategically. In the aftermath of the global financial crisis in 2008, nations around the world have undergone major changes Many of them are experiencing the pain of economic rebalancing and structural adjustment. The global financial and economic orders are also yet to be fully reconstructed. We are facing unprecedented challenges. Despite the challenges, the Asia-Pacific region, especially Asia, has demonstrated relative vitality and the potential for growth in the global economic downturn. We can foresee the region becoming the engine of global economic revitalization and the center of future development. In recent months, we are pleased to note that the U.S. has pledged to increase its engagement with the region and expressed its determination to have more active presence in Asia. With the long-time tradition of the friendship and close business cooperation shared between Taiwan and the U.S. Taiwan will remain as the essential and crucial partner of the U.S. in the region. We look forward to exploring ways of furthering our relationship and to developing a new strategic partnership. Now, Taiwan will hold its presidential election in January 2012. 
President Ma, like myself, has, has stressed the importance of Taiwan-US relationship, and in particular, the balance in the trilateral relationship between Taiwan, US, and China. I must point out that since 2008, under the Ma administration, the speed of the development between Taiwan and China have far outpaced the relationship between Taiwan and the US. So restoring the balance in the trilateral relationship will be one of my key tasks in managing our external relations when I am elected president. Now, I, like the majority of the Taiwanese people, cherish the value and close and stable US-Taiwan relationship we have always shared. In the area of regional security, since the 1950s, the defense assistance provided by the US has been the bedrock for maintaining stability in the Taiwan Strait. This security provided an environment free from Chinese military threats and allowed the people of Taiwan to pursue economic prosperity and universal values such as freedom, democracy, and human rights. With this, I wish to thank the continuing support from the members of the MCHAN for arms sales to Taiwan. Now, in the area of Taiwan-US economic relations, our partnership has evolved from the early days of US economic assistance in the 1950s to the US becoming Taiwan's largest trading partner and destination for our exported goods in the 80s. Back then, almost half of our total export value was destined for the US. Today, the US remains our third largest trading partner. In 2010, trade between the two sides was valued at 56.8 billion US dollars. The economic importance of US, of course, the, the importance of US to Taiwan actually far exceeds what the trade figures suggest. The importance of the Taiwan-US business partnership can be illustrated by Taiwan's role as the, world, the world's leading IT supplier. Taiwan and US companies, along with Taiwan businesses in China, have successfully and firmly established an irreplaceable strategic business alliance in the IT industry by, quote, connecting the vast marketplaces and digital powerhouse of the US with the enormous manufacturing centers of China, unquote. As described in 2005 Business Week article, and which remain just as true today. Now, I wish to use the opportunity today to point out that this is the best timing for furthering and developing a new strategic partnership between Taiwan and the US. The financial crisis coupled with the sovereign debt crisis have led governments to realize that traditional monetary and financial policies are no longer sufficient tools in managing growing unemployment and rebuilding the economy. The only possible solution left for global economic recovery is to find new engines for economic growth and development. Global trends are beginning to show that harnessing Asia's growth and dynamism and broadening cooperation with the region will be the key to leading the global economy forward. The US government has stressed the importance of the region, and recent statements and actions by, the pre by President Obama and Secretary Hillary Clinton have reflected the move in this direction. This is also a time when Taiwan is seeking to reposition itself in light of global economic and, potential and political restructuring. At this critical juncture, I wish to call on establishing a new strategic partnership between Taiwan and the US for the following reasons. One, both Taiwan and the US share common interests in and responsibility for regional security and stability, particularly with the rise of China. Taiwan and the US need to have ever closer and stronger cooperation 
in order to jointly maintain peace, stability, and prosperity in the region. Second, for decades, Taiwan and the US have both been firm believers in and committed to the principles of free trade. Taiwan has always kept pace with the US in forming its treaty rules and regulations. This common basis allows greater room for cooperation when working towards establishing a trading order for the region. Third, Taiwan and US tradition of business partnership will be mutually beneficial in exploring new and emerging markets, particularly for markets in this region. This has been, has been demonstrated in the Alliance for the IT Industry, with future opportunities including development of new and emerging industries, green industries, biotechnology, alternative energy, and so forth. There's much room for cooperation and mutual benefit. The traditional close business relationship and cooperation will help us explore new and emerging markets, particularly China, Southeast Asia, India, and even Central and South America. By taking advantage of the business alliance between Taiwan and the US, we can be key contributors in the global economic recovery. The future of the new strategic partnership will need efforts from both sides, particularly efforts in the following areas. First of all, a peaceful and stable cross-strait relationship is key to continuing Taiwan and US relations. When I am elected, of course, as the president of this country next year, I will place great efforts in maintaining peace and stability in Taiwan Strait. This is my responsibility towards the 23 million people in Taiwan and our responsibility as a regional um, partner a partner of the other international players in the region. All indicators show that the presidential election will be a very close race. And there is a real possibility that I will win. <laughs> yes, this is what I'm waiting for. I understand that there are some people who uh, may be worried about our victory. I will do whatever we can without compromising Taiwan's fundamental interests to ease tensions and foster an atmosphere where dialogue and interaction after the election is possible. Now, we are aware that cross-strait relations are a very important public policy matter. But in this election, there are other issues that are equally, if not more, important. These are issues relating to wealth gap, jobs, and the economy. Out of Taiwan's long-term interests, my approach on cross-trade policy during and after the election is to build consensus Instead of driving a partisan wedge between different groups in Taiwan, we will not use cross-strait relations as a campaign tool. Our partisan differences in this election will be highlighted more in domestic policies. Although there are constraints on our interaction with the Chinese interlocutors during the election, will be proactive in seeking dialogue and stabilizing the relationship immediately following the election and throughout the transition period. Now, in the area of Taiwan and US trade relations, I will pursue free trade policies on our end objectives, which I believe are the common goals shared by our two sides. I wish to point out that the Ma administration over the past three years have only actively pursued trade relations with China. The relationship was taken a step further 
with the signing of EFA in June 2010. By contrast, over the last three years, Taiwan-U.S. trade relations remained at a standstill. Many of you will know that Taiwan's keenest competitor in the global trade is the Republic of Korea. It brings me much worry to see the signing and coming into effect of FTA, the FTA between the EU and the Republic of Korea, as well as the FTA, FTA between the US and Korea. At the same time, there's little progress in the signing of FTAs between Taiwan and the US or any other major trading partners. I, feel, I fully agree with MTN's uh, continuing call on Taiwan's um, concerning the importance of a developing balanced trade relations. In this regard, there has not been much progress in the trade discussions between Taiwan and the US. The DPP's position has been that the US should take the lead in creating an APEC-based free trade agreement for the region which would, of course, include Taiwan. I am therefore pleased to note that the US is spearheading the Trans-Pacific Partnership, that is TPP, among its EPIP economies. When I visited the United States last September, the issue of the TPP was also raised in some meetings. The TPP has high standards for entry, and we must have the determination to prepare ourselves to join. Despite the Ma government's recent announcement of the intention to join the, DP, the TPP, <laughs> well, I don't really mind that if it's a DPP. <laughs> All right, let me do it again. <laughs> Despite the Ma government's recent announcement of the intention to join the TPP, we have yet to see the necessary determination and preparation made to facilitate such an effort. Now, in the 10-year policy platform of the DPP, we recognized the immediate need to carry out structural adjustments to the economy. We have a much more government involvement approach in helping the R&D phase of the startups, in introducing focused programs to develop and modernize the agriculture sector, and in building infrastructures for developing close links between the industries and local economies, and for accelerating the emergences, emergence of new industries, which include, among others, R&D as an industry of its own, green energy, long-term care services and medical care services. To improve, the intention is to improve our international competitiveness and to create quality job opportunities. These policies will not only breathe new life into the Taiwan economy, but will better prepare Taiwan for further liberalization of its markets in light of globalization. It is my belief that when DPP returns to the government, we will, in the shortest time possible, prepare Taiwan for joining the TPP. At the same time, we remain hopeful that the US and members of the MCHEN will provide us with the full support necessary in working towards the common goal of a Taiwan-US FTA and membership in the TPP. In addition, I should strengthen and promote Taiwan and the US exchanges. We should be enhancing the function and operation of TIFA, and on this basis, establish mechanisms to facilitate regular visits between high-level officials. Not only would this be conducive to resolving outstanding issues, but also it would contribute to furthering communication and understanding between the two sides for the way forward. It is therefore important to take action as soon as possible to resolve some of the outstanding disputes in our trade relationship so that there will be opportunities to build on TIFA and to move forward from there. 
Once elected, I will proactively manage the political complications arising from certain existing bilateral trade issues so as to minimize the impact on our trade relationship with the US. They must be settled with the best long-term interests of Taiwanese people in mind, which involves more open and closer trade relations with the US. We will take steps to facilitate the mobility of international professionals and senior managerial personnel in and out of Taiwan which we understand is an area that has concerned M. Chen. Taiwan has a need for quality talent, but we must first remove current administrative and legal constraints. Under the Ma government, the number of foreign laborers increased by 16% compared to that of 2007. However, by contrast, the number of international professionals decreased by 8% during the same period. This trend is taking us in the opposite direction of upgrading the quality of our human capital. Therefore, I propose introducing special regulations or even legislations to remove obstacles preventing the entry of senior experts and professionals. Now, when the DPP was in the government last time. I say this as a matter of conclusion, of course. Taiwan and the US enjoy direct communication with each other, working together in resolving trade issues and developing mutual understandings. I wish to take this opportunity to assure you that when the DPP is in the government again, the team will place quality communication as its highest priority. At the same time, I'm confident that communications between the DPP government and the US government and NCHEN will much improve so that NCHEN's current complaints on government efficiency will be reduced drastically. I mean drastically. <laughs> I am confident that that I'm going to win the presidential election next year. I am looking forward to a prosperous future for Taiwan and US relations, particularly in establishing a new strategic partnership. And I'm hopeful that we will be moving towards furthering and deepening our relationship, creating greater mutual benefits between Taiwan and the US, and creating greater benefits for Asia for the Asia Pacific region. Thank you, and I wish you all good health and prosperity. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chen. Uh, you touched upon a lot of uh, points that our members very concerning. We, we would like you to remain on the stage uh, and help us draw three lucky winners for this book. Also, it's uh, written by Dr. Chen. The title is from scrambled eggs with onions to Xiaoying lunchbox. So if you want to find out what's, what other thing is serving from the lunchbox, you need to read the book. And here, here, so. Somebody thought that this is a recipe book. <laughs> oh. this, this person bear this last name, Vincent Ma. Vincent Ma. Vincent Ma. Please come to the stage as soon as possible. <laughs> Hopefully, this is the tie. <laughs> Scott Miko? Yeah. Micron Technology. Scott, Scott Miko? Scott is also one of our candidates for governors. And then uh, Frank Gozo? Caesar. Caesar Frank Gozo. Mex Mexican Trade Office. <laughs> the book is also autographed uh, by Dr. Tai. Now, uh, the portion that we have uh, media uh, involved, 
will be concluded. Uh, 媒体朋友,谢谢你们今天的光临。那这个我们现在目前相关的采访活动已经到此结束。谢谢大家,辛苦了。uh, we will open to the, the, the floor for question and answer in one minute. But let's talk about the book first.